Kia NBA Performance Awards beginning today with the Kia NBA Defensive Player of the Year. The Kia NBA Performance Awards are the prestigious postseason awards uh, that are important as a part of a very successful marketing partnership between Kia Motors America and the NBA. And we'll have more on that later. Uh, right now, first, representing Kia Motors America, the official automotive partner of the NBA, please welcome Regional Sales Manager Nathan Ratio. Next, he was named General Manager of the Bulls in 2009, following 11 years with the organization as a scout. The 2011 co-winner of the NBA Executive of the Year Award, Gar Foreman. And please welcome the man Gar Foreman, hired as head coach of the Bulls in 2010. He led the team to its first 50-win season since the Michael Jordan era. And in 2011, he won the NBA Coach of the Year Award. Please welcome Tom Thibodeau. Finally, he was drafted by Chicago with the ninth overall selection in the 2007 NBA draft out of Florida, where he was a two-time NCAA champion. He's been a Chicago Bull for all seven of his NBA seasons. He is a two-time NBA All-Star, and today, we are happy to announce that he wins his first Kia NBA Performance Award, and I have a feeling it won't be his last. The 2013-14 Kia NBA Defensive Player of the Year, Joakim Noah. And we'll hear from Joakim in just a few minutes, but right now, let's hear from the architect of the team that has never had a losing season under his watch as GM, Gar Foreman. I feel like we should cheer when they said your name, Joe Keem. Well, I guess we'll get to that later. Um, you know, I can't think of, of anyone that is so deserving of a prestigious award like this, um, more so than Joe Keem Noah. And we are absolutely thrilled for Joe Keem and for his family, who have had such a big part of all his success, um, to win this, this NBA Defensive Player of the Year award. You know, the first time I, I ever got a chance to see Joe Keem play in person was when I went to Florida, and it was a practice setting for a couple of days. So there were no cameras, there were no lights, no TV, nobody watching. It was just Joe Keem, his coaches, and his teammates. And the thing that jumped out right away was just how ultra competitive that Joakim was. Every drill, every scrimmage, every liner that he did, um, and it was really evident in watching him at that time that he was the guy setting the tone for that team and he was the leader for those championship teams uh, at Florida. I also remember then during the pre-draft process when John Paxson and myself uh, first got an opportunity to sit down and visit with, with Joe Keem and how impressed we were with his personality, um, how impressed we were with his passion and his IQ for the game. And uh, it, was, it was one of the greatest player interviews we had ever had in the pre-draft process and it was definitely the longest player interview we'd ever had. I think every time we asked you a question it was about a 15-20 minute answer, but we, we enjoyed it. Um, and what was evident when we got done with that process was that Joakim Noah was everything that we wanted as far as what we wanted for a Chicago Bull. Um, you know, it's been really fun for all of us to watch him and his game evolve and grow over the years. Um, Joakim's been all the things, you know, that I mentioned above. He's a competitor, he's passionate, he's intelligent, and he's a leader. Um, but along with that, what Joe Keem probably is, is uh, the best teammate, you know, that I've had a chance to witness in, in the 16 years that I've been with the Chicago Bulls. And then to take it a step further, if you're looking for one word that kind of sums up Joe Keem Noah in this type of setting, Joe Keem Noah is a winner. And I've always thought you can tell a lot about people when there's adversity. 
And I think we saw this year when we hit tough times, there's nobody you want in the trenches with you more as a teammate than Joakim Noah. So he'll be the first to say, I'm sure, when he gets up here that this is a team award. And I think in a lot of ways, this is a team award. Um, but I can't think, again, of any individual that is more deserving of this type of recognition, especially on the defensive end, where he's got such great versatility defensively and where he was the leader of our defense. So from the Chicago Bulls organization, uh, from our coaches, our players, John Paxson, the Reinsdorfs, and from the great Chicago Bulls uh, fans that we have, uh, we just want to say, Joakim, how proud we are of you, and congratulations again on this great, great honor. Thank you, Gar. And I have uh, a strong suspicion that uh, our next guest and speaker uh, will be more than happy to discuss uh, why he thinks uh, Joe Keem was so deserving of this award. And that would be Tom Thibodeau, known arguably as the best defensive coach in the NBA. Coach? Thank you, Neil. Uh, I want to thank the uh, league for recognizing uh, Joe uh, for this uh, richly deserved honor. I also want to uh, thank Joe for uh, sabotaging his draft workout so he could fall to nine and we could get him. Uh, but anyway, Joe is, uh, in my four years, and just watching him, and then uh, at the start of his career, I was on an opposing bench. So I know how I felt about him when we were playing against him. And uh, each year, I think he's gotten better and better. And I think that's a testament to his will and um, determination. Uh, and he's improved in, uh, in many different areas, not just, uh, you know, everyone talks about the passing and um, his defense, but offensively, his scoring, uh, his leadership, his professionalism. Uh, and as Gar mentioned, we were up against it this year, and he didn't let it fall apart. Um, and that was huge for our team. I think he'll continue to get better. Uh, he's uh, uh, been great for our entire team in terms of his work ethic, setting the tone for us. Uh, and there's more to come. And uh, obviously, where we are right now, uh, you know, we're disappointed with our effort uh, last night. We know we've got to turn it around. But we're very excited for Joe and all that he's done for our team. And I want to congratulate him again. Thank you. Well, we've heard from the general manager and the coach. And uh, now, to make today's announcement official and to also make a special presentation, here is Nathan Rachot from Kia Motors America. Good afternoon. The Kia Performance Awards celebrate excellence and achievement on the court and include, as mentioned earlier, the Kia Most Valuable Player Award, the Kia Six Man, Kia Most Improved Player, Kia Rookie of the Year, and the reason we're here today, the Kia Defensive Player of the Year. As Kia celebrates its 20th anniversary in the United States, we are excited to grow our family of vehicles to include the all new K900 luxury sedan, and we are proud to be recognized as a global top 100 brand. One of the keys to our momentum has been our roster of high profile sports marketing initiatives, including our partnership with the NBA. At Kia, we are true fans of NBA basketball, and we are honored to be associated with this great game. As we continue our seventh year as the official automotive partner of the NBA, and as the official vehicle of the Chicago Bulls, we understand work ethic, commitment, and perseverance are vital to success both on the road and on the court. And much like the NBA, we believe in teamwork, dedication, and performance. On behalf of all the employees of Kia Motors America and our more than 765 Kia retailers, it is my honor to be here today to present Joakim Noah of the Chicago Bulls with the 2013-2014 Kia Defensive Player of the Year Award. Congratulations, Joaquin.
good guys, the next one. In addition to this prestigious award, I'd like to also present the key to a 2015 Kia Sorento uh, to be utilized at a choice of your charity. Okay. Thank you. Man. Congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that uh, numbers don't always tell the whole story, especially in the case of uh, Joe Keane, but he averaged over 10 rebounds, a block and a half, and over a steal per game as he anchored the Bulls' defense, which held teams to a league low 91.8 points per game. And he is the first player since Michael Jordan back in 1988 to capture this honor. Here is the 2013-14 NBA Kia Defensive Player of the Year, Joakim Noah. Um, this is very humbling to be in this situation right now. And I have so many people to thank, um, starting with my family, my sisters who are all here, all beautiful little hippies. <laughs> I love you guys. My dad, you know, um, my parents divorced when I was really young, but daddy, I just want to tell you, man, you've always, you know, been there for me. Um, and I appreciate you so much, man. I just, all the work ethic, it all comes from you. My little brother, je mon Mom, seriously, like, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's every day, you know, I'm sorry for all the hard times I put you through. Single mom in New York City, it's not easy, but, you know, I know you're proud and my friends. Um, but this award um, is a team award. And, uh, you know, this wouldn't be possible without, you know, my boy Kirk Heinrich, you know, the old man just picking up full court, Tibbs being on him every day. Um, you know, guys like Jimmy Butler, Taj Gibson, my whole team. And I appreciate them through all the adversity that we've gone through for them to never let up and just keep fighting. Um, I'm just, I'm so proud of that and it's bigger than awards. It's, um, it's just something that I'll never forget just throughout all the adversity. Just, uh, being in this position and uh, getting this award and of course Tibbs you know um, you know we've we definitely have had our <laughs> our hard times our ups and downs you know um, but you know without your system you know this wouldn't be possible um, you know the people who I started playing basketball with in France Mr. Henderson uh, Ron Stewart and then going to New York Billy McNally, I'll never forget you. But this goes, this award goes to somebody who uh, I'll never forget. Somebody who just passed, who meant so much to me, um, who believed in me. And uh, Mr. Green, I, I love you, and um, I appreciate you. And I know you're smiling down right now, and really proud. So um, this award goes to you. Thank you. We're, we're going to ask uh, Joe to kind of hang by the uh, podium here, and uh, he'll uh, answer questions. I know we have a lot of uh, different media outlets here, and uh, Matt Yob will handle that, and I think they have some mics. Uh, so if you'll just raise your hand uh, if you have a question for Joe. All right. Thank you, Neil. For those of you who have a question, please wait for a microphone and then state your name and your affiliation, please. Thanks. Hey, Joe Keem. Uh, David Schuster from The Score. Because you play for such a defensive-minded coach and he preaches it uh, almost endlessly to all you guys, does this award mean even a little bit more to you? I'm, I'm sorry. I, had in, I'm, I didn't hear one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Joe. Back here. 
Because uh, you played for such a defensive-minded, serious coach, does this award mean even more to you because of what uh, defense means to him? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, defense helps winning. And uh, uh, winning is definitely the most important thing. I remember one day we were working out at the Birdo Center, and Tibbs was putting me through a real grueling workout. And I told him, you know, Tibbs, if we weren't winning games, I would really, really hate you. <laughs> and he said, trust me, Joe, I feel the same way about you. <laughs> so um, I'm just thankful that, um, you know, we've won more than we've lost. Uh, yesterday was, a, like Tibbs said, you know, yesterday was a tough game. Um, but we're looking forward for tomorrow. Hey Joe, Mike McGraw, Daily Herald. Can, if, you're, if you're up to it, can you? I know we've told this story before, but can you take us through the uh, how you and uh, Tyrone Green met and what he did for you when he first or you got going with him? Um, I met Mr. Green through my mom was actually going through the yellow pages in New York City in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, we moved from France to New York when I was 13. And uh, we went to the PAL, it was a couple blocks away from my house, and we met him, and right away he was talking about, I'll take you to the next level. You know, I coached Lamar Odom, I coached Shamika Hoskla. I was like, man, this guy's talking a lot of trash, man. And, you know, he just, he just always believed in me um, at a young age. And um, he would always tell me, you know, if you want to get better, uh, you got to stay with me in the summer. You know, while my mother and my sister would leave and, you know, travel in the summertime, um, he would always tell me that, you know, he could take me to the next level if I stayed with him. And that's the sacrifice that I had to make to get to this level. And so I stayed on his couch and became the ball boy at ABCD. And, um, you know, those are the sacrifices I made and they were all because of Mr. Green. And I know that I wouldn't be in this position right now if it wasn't for him. And um, it was bigger than that. He was really like another father figure to me. And, um, you know, it's hard to talk about because there's so much going on right now. Um, but, um, but that was my guy, and I love him. Joe, Nick Friedel, ESPN Chicago. Specifically with the last two years, as you look back, is there one thing that you can point to as to why your game has developed the way it has? Um, one thing, no. I think it's just the commitment that you got to put into your craft every day. Um, you know, even at, at this point in my career, you know, there's so many distractions all the time, and you just have to stay focused on your craft. Um, not just at the NBA level, but I always tell that to, to kids, you know, when I talk to kids, you know, there's so many distractions out there. You just have to stay focused on what's important to you um, and, and the belief that you have in yourself, you know. Um, but, you know, this, like I said, this award um, is not about me, you know. Even though I get to go home with that weird-looking dude and that weird stance, it's not even a great defensive stance or anything. <laughs> but um, like I said, this is about this is about our team. Joe, uh, Steve Ashburner, NBA.com. This is a season, interestingly enough, where you've gotten a lot of attention for your development as an offensive player. And I'm curious in in becoming more utilized and more of a threat on offense, whether there's been a temptation you've had to fight to take plays off defensively, that's often where we see players get a little rest. Nah. I think Tibbs would let me know. If I was taking plays off defensively, I think he would let me know. Um, but, no, overall, I think it's just um, my teammates have more confidence in me to make plays, and my coach has more confidence in me to make plays. Um, I think that's, and I feel more confident as well. Joe, uh, Sam Smith, Bulls.com. Um, some of the greatest big man names have been on this. Uh, David Robinson, Kim Olajuwon, Lonzo Mourning, just got into the Hall of Fame. 
Um, is this something that you could have or would have thought about at all coming into the NBA? Thought even possible or even was in your dreams at all? Never. I never thought I'd be in this position right now. Um, all I did was just, I just kept working. And to be in this position means a lot, but, um, you know, it's not about awards. This is a team game, um, and it's about winning. Winning is what makes me happy. It's not, these awards are great, and, but it's not, it's not the reason why I play the game. Joe, Joe, uh, Romain Brunet with uh, L'Equipe 21. Um, so you already explained what, you, what this award uh, means uh, for you in English. Uh, can you just say it uh, in French and what it means to have your, your family with you today? No, avoir ma famille avec moi aujourd'hui, ça veut, ça veut tout dire. Euh, je, suis super, je suis super fier de ce que ma famille représente. Euh, J'ai trois belles sœurs. J'ai un petit frère, euh, Wistiti. Non, il est super cool. Avoir mon père ici, ça veut tout dire pour moi. Et euh, être ici dans cette, dans cette situation, c'est quelque chose d'important. Mais je sais aussi que c'est pas que pour moi, c'est pour, pour mon équipe. Euh, on a vraiment travaillé très dur cette année pour y arriver. Et être dans cette position, c'est vraiment... Euh, ça me fait super plaisir. Joe, uh... Casey Johnson with the Chicago Tribune. Uh, you have a pretty unique ability to switch on to smaller players in the perimeter and guard them. First of all, do you, uh, where do you think that ability comes from and do you kind of relish that reputation of being able to guard people that are smaller and quicker than you on paper? Um, I just want to win. I just want to win. But I think... Um, when I look back on it, I think it just came from, you know, just watching my father work and how the way he trained as a tennis player. And subconsciously, I think it just taught me work ethic. Um, you know, like my father will always tell me to jump rope. You know, I don't think a lot of big, big guys are out there jumping rope. Um, sometimes, you know, I would go running with him. He would go on jogs and when I was like 10 years old, I would take my bike. Um, and then as I got older, I would run with him, you know, before school or after school. We would jog a lot. And after the end of the jogs, we would always sprint at the end of the jog. And to me, that just came normal. Just, you know, that's kind of, you know, my relationship with my dad was working out, you know, because he knew that that's my dream was to be a basketball player. and. You know, he had that experience, um, you know, being an athlete. So, um, yeah, switching out on the perimeter, all those things, I think it, it's not something that I thought about as a kid, but I think that all those things, all, the, all that work that I put in as a kid, I think it just it helped. Joe, uh, Steve Ashburn, NBA.com. I'm curious, you know, everybody in this league talks about how much work it is to play defense. Uh, it, it wins games, yes, but can you talk a little bit about the fulfillment or the satisfaction of knowing when you've made a great defensive play or had your team's had a tremendous defensive game? Well, defense helps win basketball games. And, you know, being in the locker room after a win with your teammates, and defense isn't easy either. You have to really um, commit, uh, sacrifice. Um, and I just feel like I just think about so many plays defensively um, that some of my teammates made. Like you, you, you might even think like a guy like Mike Dunleavy, you know, who's not known for his defense or anything like that. But you know, there was a time during the year where. You know, he got a, he had a big gash on his head, got like 10 stitches on his head and came back in the third quarter. And the first play takes a charge. And he'll never be remembered as, when his career's over as a defensive player. But to, to me, you know, that means everything. You know, just somebody who's ready to sacrifice his body, 
you know, for to win. You know, those are things that I'll never forget. So even though he's not recognized or anything like that, those are things that, you know, I won't I won't forget. It's not about me making a play sometimes, it's who you least expect. I don't know if that answers your question, but I wanted to just share that story. Congratulations uh, once again to Joaquin, well-deserved as the winner of the Kia NBA Defensive Player Award. And uh, Joe is now going to make his way over to that 2015 Kia Sorento for some photos. And we remind you as we close here this afternoon to be sure and stay tuned in the coming days for announcements of the four remaining Kia NBA Performance Awards, those will all be coming up and they'll all be televised live on NBA TV and streamed live on NBA.com. And uh, be sure to watch the NBA playoffs. The Bulls are back in action again uh, tomorrow night at the United Center. And you can watch those games on TNT, ESPN, and NBA TV, as well as your local and regional channels. From the Lincolnshire Marriott, have a good afternoon, everyone, and we'll see you at the game. We will have much more on Joe Keem and the Bulls starting at 5.30 on Sports Talk Live, which will be live from the United Center, then at 6.